what type of exercise should I do as someone over 50? Jim, thank you for the question. I like that the name's Jim because in my head it's like G-Y-M <laughs> and he's asking a question about exercise, which makes me think of the gym. But it's a very, it's a very simple question, but a very loaded question because the answer is it depends. It depends. <laughs> Doesn't it always depend? It, it always depends. <laughs> So in the situation, we'll make some generalities, but we'll start by saying, what exercise should you be doing? Well, it depends on what your individualized goals are. If your goals are to be like Richard Morgan and become an indoor rowing champion, the exercise that he should be doing might be different than if your goal is to go run a 400 meter sprint. If your goal is to say, you know what? I just wanna be able to lift my grandkids without having any type of symptoms or discomfort. Like the exercise that you should do will be different. I don't wanna lose my balance. Your exercise will be different than the next person. So it's gonna very much depend on what you want as a person. What are your limiting factors? How do we strengthen your strengths? And then how do we take your weaknesses and bring those back up to make you the most robust lifelong athlete that we can? So as a generality, as we get older, we should be doing more explosive power-based movements than we did when we were younger. It's kind of counterintuitive to what you've probably heard or what you've been told. When you get older, the most important thing that you can do is move with speed. Is it going to be the same speed as when you were 15 years old? No, but it's so important. We lose power much faster than we lose strength as we age. After 30, I think it's 1% strength per decade and 3% for power. Now those can be offset by the training that you're doing. So what is power? Power has a time component. Work is force times distance. Power is work times distance divided by delta T, the change in time. The more powerful you are, it means the more output that you have. It means that you're moving a force times a distance in a short amount of time. So think of it this way. If you're older and you go to lose your balance, you slip on ice or you trip on a curb, does it matter that you have more endurance, more strength, or more power? The thing that you're gonna do to catch yourself is rely on how fast your system can react. That is muscular power. So here's the caveat to that. To possess muscular power, you have to have fundamental muscular strength. Muscular strength supports muscular power. Muscular power doesn't support as much as muscular strength that supports power. So you have to have strength to have power. But as a generality, as you get older, you need to move fast, you need to be explosive, and you need to work up towards that. So a very simple way that we like to start people with power-based movements when they're older is by doing power-based stuff on the ground, right? We're not gonna go, oh, you haven't sprinted or moved fast in 20 years. Let's go do an agility T-drill. Let's go do 200 meter or sorry, 20 meter agility sprints as fast as you can because their body's not gonna adapt to that. It's gonna be too much load too soon. But what if we go on the ground, we do a bridge, so heels on the ground, lifting your butt up towards the sky. But what about on the concentric part, when you're lifting the hips up, we have you lift them up as fast as you can and then lower yourself down. Lift up as fast as you can, lower yourself down. We took out some impact forces. We took out the effect of gravity, but we added in some power into that. Now we can start moving that up across the sequence to eventually get to standing, jumping, cutting, and doing all of those things. So as a generality, as you get older, muscular power. But for muscular power, you need muscle strength. So get strength, add power in, but we need power. Gate speed, how fast you can walk, is an independent predictor for how long that you'll live and how long that you'll live without needing assistance. That's fascinating. Yeah. I think um, as you were talking, I thought of all the different clients that you've had over the years and the different things that you would make them do, right? And not to, um, not to downgrade 10,000 steps a day. Like yeah. I think a lot of people are like, okay, I need to get my 10,000 steps a day and I'm good. For some people, that is true. Like go get your steps in and you better be walking fast. Don't just be strolling, <laughs> but walk fast and get your 10,000 steps in. But I do think that there's something unique in your ability to be able to move powerfully. And one thing I was thinking of specifically was 
your one client, Mary, and mm-hmm. how she she was just a spitfire. We may have spoken about her in the past. Yeah. And um, she was just such a spitfire, older woman in her 90s, right? And and she, she would move with power. Mm-hmm. She would move with power in her 90s. And I think, you know, if I can be a 90-year-old like Mary, I'm going to have a great life yeah. ahead of me. Yeah. And I'll say to to back the point earlier, to her last day, she was at home. Mm-hmm. She was at home. And, and to me, when I look at when that time comes, when that time comes for my parents, when it comes for myself, when it comes for friends, when it comes for anyone that we meet, to me, that's, that's ideal. Mm-hmm. That you get to pass peacefully in your own environment. Mm-hmm. And the way that you do that is by what you're doing now, the training that you're doing. And it's never too late to start. It's never too late. I'm, I mentioned Richard Morgan earlier, 93 years old, three-time indoor rowing world champion. Guess when he started training? In his 70s. His 70s is when he started training for this. If you are having a heartbeat, if you have a breath, that means that your body can adapt to the stressors placed upon it. Now, we need to make sure that when you're taking the load in, that you have good loadability so that you can adapt to those stressors. Because if you don't have good loadability and you're taking more load, hello, injury cycle, mm-hmm. you get back into that. We want to keep you out of the injury cycle. So we got to work on loadability as you're being loaded with gradual progressions, working back up to that. But you're never too old. You're also never too young. Mm-hmm. I, I guess the argument can be made if you're like an infant. <laughs> if you're a toddler, you got no excuses. Right. But even an infant, right? They're, they're working hard. Mm-hmm. They're trying to figure out how do I move my head? How do I roll? How do I crawl? How do I interact with all this space around me? So I guess they're training as well. So no, I, I take back what I take back. <laughs> <laughs> can I do that? Is that yes, allowed? It's okay. allowed. <laughs> I think all in all, it's just, it's so important to move. It's important to spend time every single day doing something that's fulfilling. Um, going back to the, the first thing that we said after Jim asked this question is, it depends on what your goals are, but it depends on what fulfills you. If 10,000 steps a day fulfills you, great. But there is a level of, you know, what if you had that dream of, um, you know, being in the, is it called the senior Olympics mm-hmm. where you are in your seventies and you want to try and get first place in your local senior Olympics meet and you're training for a 400 at the age of 70. Like that is awesome. Do that, but don't, don't sell yourself short because of age, because of injury, because of, um, previous belief systems that may have been given to you 30, 40, 50 years ago. Don't sell yourself short. Allow this to be a message of, wow, I can achieve something great again. And I don't have to be afraid because that that really is the goal. And if you're a younger person listening and maybe you haven't faced that specific adversity and maybe you do, um, maybe you are fit and you are working out and all of the things, make sure to keep that as part of your life because you enjoy it and because it's so good for you. Don't allow it to become this burden or burnout or struggle make sure that you're pursuing the joy of movement the joy of really what our bodies are like celebrating what our bodies can do is is great at every single age